All right. <clears throat> we are live and we are on IGTV. Okay, so I'm going to start recording now because this is also going to go on the podcast and um, in, other, in other places. So let's begin. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, if you're listening to this on uh, podcast, Clint Podcast, welcome. If you're listening or watching this on Instagram or wherever you're watching this, welcome again. I'm Anna Rova, as um, a lot of you know, and um, I help successful single women attract committed masculine men. I run a very powerful group coaching program for those types of women. And so today I'm coming to you here to for um, a quick Q&A. Uh, mainly because, as, as, as a lot of you know, or maybe you didn't, last week, um, which was the second week of May, I ran a, a live webinar called uh, Magnetize Your Masculine Men, uh, How to Create Your Dating Funnel with Intention. It was extremely successful. We ran out of spaces on Zoom and like we ran out of spaces everywhere. Um, and I also had a lot of questions um, at the end. So, <clears throat> and we went you know, over two hours. Um, so I promised everybody who attended the webinar that I'm going to ask, uh, answer their questions about dating and men um, in a separate video. And this is that video. So for those of you who are live right now with me on Instagram, welcome. I hope you can stay. I'll go through my list of about 15 questions. And if you have any questions in the meantime, um, let me know and I'll answer those live as well. Um, just to give you a context, um, on the webinar itself, we talked about, um, you know, the, the foundations of dating in today's world, uh, you know, the dating is supposed to be fun and, and exciting and that it's all in you. There is a way to change your dating life, uh, especially if you're a woman, you know, who's exhausted, uh, but feels yucky about dating, can't do it anymore, doesn't know what the rules are. There's a way to do it right and there's a way to do it with a lot less effort um, than, than you currently are. Uh, if you are burning out from dating and you're like, I'd rather give up at some point now, um, know that there's a way. And, and the way I shared on the webinar, I shared some of the principles of how to do this, which is um, the feminine masculine polarity and then how to create your dating funnel with intention meaning there's three stages of dating. Uh, this is everything I teach, by the way, to my clients uh, who work with me, with us in our program, but I just um, shared all of this there. We talked about the 10 rules of being claimed that are also 10 podcast episodes and 10 IGTV live episodes that um, basically encompass the, the 10 rules that we have in our program and our philosophy when we're dating men. Uh, and yeah, and then at the end, I was just answering questions. So I find that even if you did not attend the webinar, um, my answer to these questions are going to be very helpful. And I want all of you listening and watching um, to think of Anarova as your masculine man fairy, godmother, <laughs> like your go-to person when you have questions about men and dating. Send me a DM on Instagram um, and, 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 and let me know. You can find me on Anarova. Happy to answer questions. Sometimes I send quick voice messages, but a lot of the times I would just record this. Um, so yeah, well, let's begin. So first question from Stacy. I recently bumped into an old friend and there was a spark. We went on a date, there was chemistry. It was really fun and went great. Then he became afraid after saying I was marriage material and he sabotaged things. Do you think there's any coming back from situations where a man starts letting his fear lead? Great question, Stacy. I think there's always coming back from situations, but that's not your responsibility in this case, right? So think about it. You attracted a man, an old friend, right, from the past who got afraid and scared because you were marriage material and like he self-sabotaged. What a lot of women do, and I think what you're kind of referring to is your question is, what can I do to turn this around and get it back? Well, I mean, you could run after him. You could tell him, no, 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 don't be afraid. It's okay. We can do this. But I don't think you want to put yourself into that position. You know, a lot of the times men tell us very straightforward that they're afraid, they're not ready for commitment, they don't want a relationship, they don't want children, and we as women do not believe them. And we start kind of running after them or presenting ourselves in, in, in the best possible 
way so that he can see, you know, that I am worthy, that I am available, that it's great that I'm marriage material. But Stacy, in this situation, he's explicitly and openly and directly telling you that he is not marriage material yet. And he's afraid and scared to, to go there. So you gotta you gotta listen to that, you're gonna recognize that, you're gonna trust that, and you're gonna let him be, right? Because what kind of a dating life you wanna, and what kind of a relationship do you wanna end up with, with a man who told you from the beginning he's not ready, or he's scared because you're marriage material, you're gonna run after him, get him to be in a relationship with you, which you can, right? Men are, I don't wanna say easily manipulated, but men are quite, how shall I put this into uh, words? Um, you like the least case, I mean, you're going to end up in a situation here or you're going to end up in a relationship and that man is going to turn around and walk away. Right. So. So I suggest, do you think there is a coming back? Yes. You let him come back to you. If he tells you that he's afraid because you're marriage material, you're like, awesome. Thank you for letting me know. I know. And that's it. And then you continue dating. Choose someone who chooses you. This is the rule of my claim program. Choose someone who chooses you. Women make the biggest mistake choosing men who do not choose them. Do not do that mistake. Do not go that route. And how you do that, you actually you need to work on your belief system about men, about yourself, about your femininity. You need to stay in your body. Because there's so many men out there um, who want to claim you and who want to pursue you. So open up yourself to those kinds of men. And if your pattern is attracting emotionally unavailable men, then that, that, that's a deeper rooted issue that we need to work with. And this is something that we work with um, in our program. So I hope this, this is helpful. Next one uh, from Brianne. Uh, Do you have any specific dating sites or tips to share? around how to present yourself in dating sites to best attract a masculine man. Sorry, that was Tara. <sighs> Look, the dating sites question on how to present yourself is not really, I don't want to say not really my area of expertise, but I don't focus on, 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 I don't focus on the tips and the tricks around dating sites and around dating specifically because my work is a lot deeper than that. My work is about the philosophies, the uh, principles that you apply in, in your dating life and in your dynamics with men and less about how do I best present myself to attract a masculine man on a dating site. I mean, everybody kind of knows that, you know, you being like, if you want to attract a masculine man, ask yourself the question, how does my, how does my profile need to look like? So I look like a feminine essence woman. You know, on your profile, it's just a profile. It's something that, of course, just attracts attention. But just by being a woman, Tara, and looking attractive, you're going to get attention, <laughs> you know? And your profile should say something probably funny or whatever. Look, I don't teach that. I think there's a lot of people who teach that. And you can go and, and you know, find some dating, to, you know? That's not my area of expertise and I'm not going to go there because for me, that's not the most important thing, right? If you're a woman, because I focus on the core and the deeply rooted issues, if you're a woman who's in love with herself and in love with her life and in her body and has plenty of men around her, which is the result that we produce uh, women like this after they work with us, I don't need to give you any tips and tricks of how your dating profile should look like because... You're going to find a, a great picture to put out there. You, you, you're going to put up some profile about yourself, but you're not going to stress about it too much. Like that's not like that's not in your or what should I say or how should I do like all of that stress and all that discomfort is in your body and, and you can see it. Right. So what I focus on when I work with women, it's like, how do you feel in your body? Let's change and transform your belief system that I might not be good enough. Women, I feel women who worry about their dating profile, how it looks like deep down inside. That's not to say that you are Tara, because I don't know you deep down inside. A lot of times there is an insecurity there. So that's what needs to be worked on and not what kind of picture do I put? Because just by being a woman, trust me, looking attractive on a photo, you're going to get matches like no matter what, <laughs> you know? So 
Okay, number three. And if you have any questions, um, I see on Instagram, a bunch of people are joining. I'm just answering questions based on my webinar on how, uh, how to create your dating funnel with intention. I'm gonna finish my questions here. If you have any questions for me, um, let me know and I'll answer yours after. Number three. Um, sorry, I'll go to number four because this was a bit weird. Okay, number four. I'm a therapist um, and it kind of worries me to let men know what I do because someone think or have said, oh, you got to analyze me. Do you have any suggestions to work around that? I personally think it's a silly comment on their part though. Uh, that's anonymous. I don't have their name. Mm. I agree with you. That's a silly comment on their part. Men do not care what you do. It doesn't matter whether you're a therapist, psychologist, financial banker. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, we work actually with a lot of therapists and, and psychologists. Um, a man who will be, I think personally, this is my personal opinion, a man who will be intimidated by what you do has his own insecurity issues, right? Like a man who likes you and who is attracted to you and you tell him you're, you're a therapist, he'd be like, that's really interesting, tell me more, right? He won't be afraid to... Um, that you're going to analyze him. I mean, yeah, he's going to crack a joke there, but he won't be afraid that you're going to analyze him. So I would flip that around through the mirror principle that we always teach and look at, not sure what your name is, look at how, are you, this is your own insecurity coming up, I believe. <clears throat> so if you sit down with a man on a date and, uh, you know, and you're insecure about what you do. Like I know a lot of women, for example, they, when they attract men who get intimidated by what they do, for example, she says, oh, I'm a business owner of this, this company, I'm a president to CEO. You are, you are, this is your own insecurity because in the past you've been attracting men who have been intimidated by that. That's a pattern that needs to change, first of all. But what you do does not drive who you are. And, and as, especially as a woman, it's just a job. So if you look at your job as just the job that you do, um, then 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 on the other side that the men will reflect that. Or if she he says yes, you know, uh, you're gonna analyze you. Uh, you could you could just turn this around into a joke and ease him a bit and say, yeah, sure, I can see you have um, you know amazing brown eyes and an amazing smile that tells me your gene pool um, was quite um, you know your gene pool was quite good or something like just. Take it, you know, turn it around. It doesn't matter what you do. And again, this is about you, not about him. How secure you feel in your body, your job doesn't matter, right? So that's how I would answer that. Um, Jenny on Instagram says, I put up cute pics on my profile and answer honestly and I hardly get hits or men totally not my type frustrating. Yeah, Jenny, sometimes that happens. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I would... There is some obviously obvious ways that you can improve your profiles and things like that, but I can't diagnose your situation in, in that sense. I mean, you know, dating is, online dating is hard. Like you also got to get in there and swipe left or right or whatever, whatever, you know. Um, I don't know your particular situation in that sense. Is this a bad pattern or not? Um, you know, it's sometimes it's just a numbers game, really. Um, so you got to get on dates live with men and, you know, got to have fun and got to be in your body and, and all of that and not get in your head about this. So, all right, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> okay, SM asks, is there a minimum amount of time one should wait before having sex with someone you're dating? I really turned into a dating coach, didn't I? <laughs> if I get questions like this. Yes, SM, wait uh, 45 days and a half and only after blah, 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 I'll send you a rule book here. Look, uh, I, don't, I don't have a rule book here because I, I'll, I'll be the first one to put my hand up and say I've, I've, I've had plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of first dates where I had sex on the first date, you know, uh, like my, like that doesn't, I know there's a lot of, look, there's a lot of theory out there, and, and I think this is a really good perspective, that you don't want to get sexual too soon. And I'll explain to you why. This is the same perspective that I say, that I tell all of my women. And this is something very important to understand. The difference between men and women, one of them, is that women, sex for us 
is very different than sex is for them. Why? Because evolutionary psychology and biology. When a woman starts having sex with a man, she gets attached. Why does she get attached? Because I talked about this on the webinar. Because evolutionary speaking, when a woman gets physical with a man, then your body is basically telling you alert, alert, pregnancy alert, I might be pregnant, this might be the future father of my children, therefore attach, attach, attach. Um, right? For men, it's not, it's not like that. Impregnate as many women as possible and move on, right? There's a lot of risk involved for a woman to um, get sexual with a man. And so, you know, yes, we have contraception today and all the, all kinds of things, right? Like from condoms to pills and everything. But our evolutionary system, our nervous system, now evolutionary psychology didn't like, you know, what, what do we have? Like 50 years of the pill and contraception like evolution, you know, evolved thousands and thousands of years ago. So the contraception is so new. We don't, we don't know how to deal with that. So that's why when women have sex with men, we attach very quickly. And if you're a woman who can deal with that and who can know that if I'm having sex with a man, I'm very clear that this is not a relationship. I am just dating and just having sex with a man, then do that. I was never able to do that, right? A lot of women, or if not most women, it's very, very hard to not get attached emotionally with a man. So I don't have a minimum amount of time for you, but I should say that you should be careful when getting sexual. A lot of women that I work with, they, they prefer to wait. They prefer to wait until there's an emotional connection. Some women prefer to wait until they're in a relationship, which is a very good idea right? Um, I'm not that woman and I've never have been, <laughs> but it is your choice and it is your rules. It is your body. And so these are your boundaries and the man who wants to be with you, he will respect the, those boundaries, right? So there's no amount of time I mean, for you. A minimum amount of time can be a week for another one. can be three months. It's very, very individual, right? I, I think I slept with my men when I was dating around, I don't know, second week after we met and like we married and everything. So I know there is a lot of coaches out there that say, uh, wait three months at least. Uh, like that's not necessarily the case for me. As I said, because I'm a coach, I'm not, my place is not to tell you the, the, the rules or the timelines. This is a, a, a great coach will ask you questions and will ask you what is specifically, what feels good for your specific situation? Because everybody's different. So that's my answer. Okay. K, Stacy, Stacy K, what do you think the root cause of attracting love bombers who then run? I'm not sure who, who love, who, who's a love bomber, but um, who then run? <laughs> I think what she means, and if somebody can clarify what's a love bomber, who's a love bomber, then I'll be happy to discuss. But um, look, uh, Stacy, I think you're referring to men who... I guess have this like super romantic connection with you and then they disappear or they ghost you. The root cause is always the same. Well, the root cause you're attracting emotionally unavailable men, men who are not ready and are not serious. The root cause is the question to you and to everybody else who's listening who might be in a similar situation is um, how are you emotionally unavailable? If you keep attracting men who run or if you keep attracting men who are not, are afraid of commitment, then we need to look at why. There's a root cause to that, and most, most uh, probably it's your belief system about yourself, about men, and about relationships. If you yourself are emotionally unavailable, then you will be attracting men who are emotionally unavailable. And in the women, in the program that I work with, with women, um, we, we deal with all of that. We reframe those belief systems. Again, it's all about deeply rooted beliefs about yourself. Am I, am I good enough? Right? Am I good enough for a relationship? Uh, a lot of women have fears around being in a relationship. A lot of women have fears about being with masculine men. They've never seen uh, healthy role models. They don't know what it lo what what it's like to be with a man who can take care of you, who is uh, a man of his word, and and who you feel really proud with, and and who you know who you can surrender to. Strong, successful women today. That's not like their reality today. And I'm like, and you know, we on discovery calls. By the way. I'm inviting you to sign up for a discovery call. It's free with either me or my team. Um, they have no idea. They think this is impossible. They're like, what kind of world you're living in? I'm like, no, what kind of world you're living in? Because most men are, are great men, right? Women just need to let them. So 
they just don't see that reality. And I'm like, that's absolutely possible, but it starts with you, right? It's all on you. So that's what I would say. That's the root cause. And that really needs to be worked on. If you are stuck in a pattern of emotionally unavailable men, that pattern needs to be broken, right? Um, okay, next question. Do feminine men, great question. Do feminine men have a chance to change into a more masculine man or are they doomed forever? <laughs> I love this question. So uh, this is from Anonymous. I'll read it again. Do feminine men have a chance to change into a more masculine man or are they doomed forever? So, <clears throat> all right. So, um, how shall I answer this question? Look, when we discuss things, when we discussed it on the webinar and I talk about this a lot, you can see it in, I think a lot of my materials are, I discuss feminine masculine polarity. For the sake of answering this question, because there's probably a lot of new people here and a lot of new people listening, let's just identify feminine masculine polarity. What, should, what does this woman mean by a feminine man? So as we know, polarity, feminine masculine polarity always exists. It's what, it's what forms the basis of attraction in a relationship. And if you if you are able to maintain that long term, that that provides sustainability and long term connection and attraction in a relationship, marriage, and so on and so forth. So uh, they're just they they're they're it's a spectrum, right? And the feminine attracts the masculine, the masculine attracts the feminine. They're like two poles. It's a duality principle, yin and yang, and so on and so forth. So, um, and you know, I, I'm just gonna say again, these are just labels, right? Like there's so many labels that are feminine, masculine. These are just um words that we describe to interpret to understand something there's a lot of misconceptions there but i'm just to simplify things right uh, most women identify with a feminine essence or with a feminine energy what does that mean that means that a woman mo i say most not all <clears throat> that means that a woman when you ask them how do you want to feel in a relationship i asked this in my webinar almost all women said i want to feel safe in a relationship, right? I want to feel taken care of. Um, you want to be spooned at night. You don't want to spoon your man. Um, you want to be taking, you want to relax. You want to surrender. You want to be safe with a man, right? If you ask a man, most men identify with a masculine essence, which is all about achievement and progress and, 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 and going and doing and <coughs> basically protecting and providing. Um, most men, you ask how you're going to feel in a relationship, he's just going to look at you and be like, what? Uh, you know, but but they will say, you know, I want to take care of my woman. I want to hold space for her. I want to I want to provide. I want to protect. That's their natural desire. Why this happens? These are not some esoteric concepts. This is actually I've studied this a lot. It actually goes to biology and evolutionary psychology. Let's not get into that. So, the masculine and the feminine are, are polar opposites, and so this is what creates attraction um, in relationships and in dating and so on and so forth. And so. And so the, 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 what can happen is the reverse, right? There's some women who really identify with that masculine essence, but it's not the majority of women, right? And, and there's some men who identify with that feminine essence, men who would rather be taken care of, right? Men who would rather surrender and let the woman lead. But that's not the majority. These are actually the minority of cases. So when we... <clears throat> When we talk about a feminine man, does a feminine man have a chance to change into a more masculine man? Or does a masculine woman have a chance to change into a more feminine woman? If the answer is kind of twofold for me, number one, if a woman, <clears throat> if a woman is um, truly a masculine essence woman, or if a man is truly a feminine essence man, then then there's no need to change anything. Like, you know, there's some women say, oh, Anarova, you're talking about this get more feminine, whatever. What if I'm okay with what I am? I'm like, great. <laughs> like, why are you here? <laughs> you know? Um, it's like, if you're a woman who's extremely strong and independent, wants to lead and wants to have a family with children and a husband, wants to take care of it all and does this and this and that, and, you know, you prefer your man to take care of more of a feminine a response and he's surrendering to you and that's attractive that's attractive to you one the, the only question you have to ask yourself what kind of men you're attracted to are you attracted to men who take charge who take control in a healthy way and who tell you hey jenny i have a day, an amazing date planned for us be ready at eight on thursday night i'll pick you up are you attracted to that then you're a feminine essence woman if you prefer, prefer to surrender let go of control just let him hold space for you 
then you're a feminine essence woman. But if you're not, if you would rather court your man and, and you know, hold space for your man, then you're a masculine essence woman. And the same thing if you're a feminine man, then, and that's great, um, then it's all good. Like everybody's happy. So when we talk about this question, I think what this, this woman said is that all men, as all women have the capacity for their feminine, uh, first of all, all of us have feminine and masculine energies within us, right? I wouldn't be talking to you right now holding this space if I didn't. I have a lot of masculine energy, actually. And the women that I work with are very successful, very ambitious. They have a lot of that, right? And we go to work, we make decisions, we go, 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 push, push, push all our lives, all our lives. And then we bring that into our dating dynamics with men. And we want a man who's masculine, but it doesn't work because two masculine um, people, beings in a relationship dynamic just doesn't work. It's not attractive. It's like you're always butting heads. A masculine man doesn't want a masculine woman. He doesn't want to compete with you. He wants to create that dance and that polarity. This is where sex happens this way, right? Like you can't have, well... Okay, you can same sex relationships and and in the bedroom, like but but there's still some sort of penetration happening, right? Anyways, I won't go there. This is this is getting too deep, but um, so yeah, and and you know, most men again knowing that most men identify with the masculine essence. Most men have capacity to stand strong in their masculine and to fully uh, step into their masculine. Now, why they don't do that, and that's why women are complaining today, because a lot of the times, just the same as, as women today, where, you know, since we were little girls, we were told to be independent and be strong and push, 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 focus on your career, don't worry about the men, don't worry about the dating, just go, go, go. And so we arrive. We arrive at 35, we arrive at 40, we're strong and rigid in our body, we care a lot of frozen tension because all that stress, all that masculine energy is just here in our head and our bodies and we show up on a date and we want a man to lead and we then complain, why does he take any responsibility? Well, because you are carrying all of that and because you are attracting feminine men. So if you're constantly in your masculine energy and in that control, 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 can't let go, can't trust men, you'll be attracting feminine men. And so in the same way, a lot of men today, they have been brought up by mothers who told them to shut up, to they, who told them what to do. And then, you know, they didn't have role models. I talk about all of that in the program that I teach and when we work with women. Women do not, do not have empathy for the masculine journey. They do not have the knowledge about the masculine journey. So when they realize that, that, you know, when we talk on our group coaching calls, I'm like, some men really need re-education here and space to step up and lead because a lot of men didn't have role models. They didn't go through rites of passages. They don't know how it looks like. The, uh, today, masculinity is toxic. How do you feel men feel today? How do you think men feel today? They feel like, shit, if I'm gonna ask her on a date, she's gonna think I'm, or like, tell him, tell you be ready at 8 p.m. or open the door for her, on be, or be even a little bit assertive, she's gonna consider me toxic. But if I'm not, she's gonna consider me weak. So what the hell do I do here? Like, what do you want? Do you want me to be weak or do you want me to be a little bit arrogant and toxic? Like, it's crazy what's happening today. So again, going back to the concept, men have had today, men experience women who are extremely strong, extremely independent, tell them what to do all the time. And, and when you do that shift, for example, I see women who work with me, they go out there and they see these types of men, that requires a little bit of practice. So to answer your question, men who are, they can be masculine essence men, but they, do, but they did not have a chance to step into their, into, their, into their masculine because they've been constantly surrounded by mothers, sisters, society, and women in general have dated wives, who told them what to do, and they kind of relaxed, sat on the couch and said, all right, I'll just let the woman lead. And that's why sometimes, you know, women say, oh, it didn't work with me, but he married the next girl, for example. Sometimes that's what happens because he meets a woman who lets him make his own deci decisions. He, he meets a woman who trusts and believes in his, well, not potential, but in his masculinity that he can do it. He's not a little boy that needs to be parented. And so, Yes, of course, a lot of men have a chance to turn more into the masculine if they're willing to. So that can be on their side by themselves, right? Because a lot of men wake up from the nice guy syndrome. 
a lot of men become these nice guys who we're not attracted to and who we call feminine men. But through their, like they read these books about no more Mr. Nice Guy, right? And then they wake up and they're like, shit, actually I have testosterone and I have some balls and I'm gonna like take charge here, you know? And that's what's attractive. So, um, but then another way how they could change is if, if they're with a woman like that. Yeah, if they're with a woman who can let go and surrender. If they're with a woman who they're asking, where do you wanna go? And the woman is like, I don't know, surprise me. He's like, no, no, but where do you wanna go? And she's like, I prefer this and this and this. Oh, but can you make the reservation? She's like, sorry, I'm not available for that. Or, you know, and then he's like, hang on a second, what's happening? So he, he by leaning back, and that's, that's exactly what we do in the program. We help single successful women go from that masculine, go, 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 I'll tell you what to do and you just do it, to let go, to surrender, let go of control, ease, flow, and, and softness in her body so she can attract the type of man who can step up. Men, it, it, that, those polarity dynamics are so fascinating because we always adjust to each other. Like think about it, when you're with a guy who, who has no backbone, what do you do? You take over, you take charge, right? And the same thing happens with a man if, well, I'm not going to say no backbone because then when we talk about women, he can also say she has no backbone. Let's just call it feminine energy, right? Who prefers not to lead. Then he will take charge. So, so no, they're not doomed forever. Most men have that capacity. It's just that capacity might not be, not, might not be for you. We work with a lot of women in relationships who actually have polarity reversed where she's always been wearing the pants and that's exhausting, she doesn't want that. And we've seen a lot of the times, as soon as the woman just lets go, you know, stop, stop paying the bills, stop uh, buying him socks, stop buying him underwear, stop making decisions about his job, stop telling him what to do. Like, geez, <laughs> just stop <laughs> and let him buy his own bloody socks, you know, like, I'm not his mother. So a lot of men really step up and start doing the work. Sorry, long with an answer to the question. Um, okay, so there was a question here from Jenny. What's your take on a guy who you date for a year, no indication of a problem, starts to ghost, says smothered, says smothered leaves, and then starts up with someone doing IVF, not his kid wants to chase you but can't teach her. Oh my God. Jenny, this sounds really complicated and very messy. And without going into the details, I would suggest you to get out. I normally don't suggest that, but with, I just read ghost, IVF, leaves, kid, chase, but can't teach her. This is really, really messy. And if you've been dating for a year, that's really messy and that's really, really long. You need to get out of this limbo situation that doesn't serve you. Uh, work on yourself and open yourself up to men who choose you because it seems like you've chosen a guy who doesn't choose you. As soon as I hear like exes, um, can't ditch her, uh, back and forth, like this is mess. This is mess in your energy system. This is mess in your body. Are you available for that? If you want to continue entertaining that and being in that mess, no clarity, then you can do that. But if you're here with me asking this question, then I think you already know the answer. So what you need to do is you need to get clear on what do you want? What are you available for? And start to work on that. Are you available for this type of behavior? Are you available for this mess? If not, then you need to make certain moves so that you open yourself up to something that, that you're available for. I hope this makes sense. Let me see if there's other questions here. And move on. Okay, moving on. How long is too long before waiting to be claimed by someone after starting to see them? Again, the question about timelines. Please do not ask me questions about timelines. How long is too long? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, okay, if you'd ask me, I'm dating this guy for five years. I'm like, all right, that's too long, probably, you know. But, and the question is, how long is too long before waiting to be claimed by someone? That's, the fact that Marie P, or you're asking this question, already tells me that you're in your head. When you are doing your funnel as a feminine essence woman, something we talked about on the webinar, we talked about the three stages of the dating funnel, which is first awareness, right? You put yourself out there to be pursued by men. Stage number two, dating. 
those men will approach you, you choose who to say yes to, who to say no to, and then you're dating. And you're always dating three men at a time. There's never a case where a woman is dating just one man. And remember that. If you're having sex or if you're seeing this guy very often, doesn't mean you're in a relationship. One of the rules of being claimed is you do your funnel and you do not stop your funnel of dating at least three men at a time until one of them comes forward and tells you explicitly or explicit or implicitly that he wants to be exclusive and wants to be in a relationship with you. These are the primary and foundational rules of dating and there should be no blame or guilt about dating more than guy, one guy at a time. What do you think men are doing? Do you think men are just d dating this one woman and like that's it? No, they're dating a bunch of women at, at a time and it's fine and that's how it should be. Dating is a dance. Like if you've been to a salsa or a bachata dance, you're dancing with people right like you're dancing you're saying oh do i like how this guy leads me into salsa do i like his shirt? does he smell nice like how does he feel is it too hairy for me is it too big for me like and that's what you do you dance with men you you date and, you, and you're having fun and you're not overthinking all of this right so it's not too long you know some 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 women date for i don't know three months and they get claimed by a man by one man and that's it's your choice when you say yes and then some women date for six months sometimes it, it, it's a year you know i mean it really depends i have clients in my program who are still working with me they started working with me and they, or they're not in a relationship yet after let's say six months being on this journey because of many many different factors right every woman's journey is unique and individual so i do not have a rule book for you that says okay um, you know, how long before I sleep with him? Uh, month and a half. How long before I get claimed? Uh, 95 days. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work like that. Everybody's individual. That's why you want to work with a coach who will ask you specific questions, who will guide you through your own journey. And, and because that journey is very, very different for everyone. Sometimes it takes three months. Sometimes it takes two years. I mean, who the, who the hell knows? I don't know. It's the same thing, you know, about your skin problem or whatever, you know, it's, it's, everybody's very, very unique, right? It took me two years to get rid of my adult acne after like struggling with this for 15 years. Some women carry these beliefs, belief systems about men and themselves for many, many years. And so when you start working on yourself, it's, it's not a linear journey. It's always cyclical, right? So how long? A very individual. Next one. Um, also, it is such a trend these days when you go on a first date for online dating, should you at least reach out for the splitting the bill and see if he allows it or not? All right, splitting the bill question. I always love these questions. Mm. Look again, I don't have a black and white rule here. I know there's some femininity and dating coaches who would say absolutely 100% no. You do not pay for dates. You do not bring up your wallet you do not even showcase it, right? Uh, I'm not as rigid as that. Um, <clears throat> because again, I don't focus on the specific thing that you do, the right lipstick that you wear, uh, your dating profile or your dating picture. I mean, in general, I, I would agree with that. In general, I would agree that in the masculine and feminine polarity, well, uh, uh, how you set up the stage also really matters, right? If you're creating your dating funnel with intention and with polarity, you are going to be attracting masculine men who initiate. They initiate. And if they initiate and they invite you on a date, you can very much bloody assume that he's going to pay for that date. If a man is not willing or able to pay for a date, then I don't know what you're doing with this guy. And, and the fact and the reality is that masculine men love, they love to give. They love to take care of a girl. They love to make her feel special. And it's not about the money. But it's about the gesture. It's about, hey, Jenny, let's go on a date. I have booked out this restaurant. You say yes, and then you meet, and then he sits down. Maybe he puts up a chair for you, and then you have a lot of fun. And then he, it's, a, it's, it's a gesture of, of, of him providing space for you, holding space for you, and you just being. The feminine is all about being. You just need to show up. Like, that's all you can do, right? Because... 
feminine energy is what fills the room. You're going to fill the room with your beautiful voice, with your beautiful smile, with your beautiful hair, with your beautiful makeup, like with your beautiful energy. And it's that exchange of dance. That's why 50-50, forget about 50-50. There's no 50-50. I'm currently pregnant now with my second child. Okay, you ready for it? Ta-da! <laughs> for those of you listening to the podcast, I just showed my 25 weeks uh, belly. Um, like, where is 50-50 in this? My husband doesn't grow babies and doesn't produce milk in his ginormous breasts like you know so forget about that so the splitting the bill situation i mean you don't want this to be awkward like if you if you go if you're working on this polarity stuff you're so confident in your body as a woman you're there to have fun in your mind this is not a question like don't stop <laughs> like if you're coming to a dead or you're thinking about Who's going to pay for this day? You know, no. Like, I just had a woman in the program. I've actually interviewed her. I interviewed three women in the program. And um, one of them was telling us the story of the first time in her life, first time in her life after starting this journey with us, this man who she's dating booked up tickets for them for two weeks to Puerto Rico. Not only he paid for them, but he also paid for the hotel. And she's like... I've been a woman who I've been flying men around the world to see me. And I'm like, that's freaking insane. Like, do you know what I mean? And so a woman just sitting there, she can't believe her eyes or ears or whatever. This reality that this man has bought her tickets to Puerto Rico. That night I, I laid down with my husband and I said, did I ever pay for anything with us? Like, you know, and we were traveling Mexico, Brazil, whatever. He's like... I think you just bought your ticket, first ticket to Mexico, but that's it. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about this because this man wanted to be with me. Like, he's like, let's go and live with me in Mexico. I have an apartment. Let's move to Brazil. He bought the tickets. He arranged everything. Like, I saved so much money when I was with this man, you know, because like, forget about money. Great men will, will pay and they will, they will, they will do this as a gift. They're, they're generous, you know, money, what's, what's money there for? You know, men make money to take girls out. Men make money to protect and provide, of course, but when the dating scene is there, men are not stupid, you know, they, they don't, ex I mean, all right, some men expect women to pay for their dates today, but do you want to be with a guy like that? No. So a lot of the times, like male hunger for, for uh, success and for dominance, this, Hello, evolutionary biology. If you really study that, you'll see why men compete for resources. Men compete for resources to compete for the most fertile and youngest and most beautiful female, right? Because it's in their system to impregnate her so that his offsprings are going to be like the best gene pool. Obviously, it's all subconscious, but they love this game. They love the game when they have money, they have success, and they can take a woman to a beautiful restaurant, take a woman on a yacht, uh, you know, buy her a gift, make her happy, beautiful, laugh, smile. That's what it's all about. So don't even worry about that. And if a man can't pay for your date, then like, you probably need to get out. <laughs> like, is this what you want? No. You know, of course, when you go further and you when, you, when you're in a relationship and then when you are... Um, let's say in marriage, right? We talk about common budgets and things like that. Like that's all becoming different, but still you can play in that polarity. My man takes care of our survival and the bills and everything. I don't care about that. Like it doesn't mean that some, a woman messaged me and said, oh, Anna, but why are you saying that you're giving up away your independence and you're not participating in the financial uh, decisions? I'm not saying that. I have complete, um, we have complete transparency about money and who, how much money we have in the bank and why and how, but he takes care of the bills and he takes care of the future, making sure that we can have a house and I'm going to be taking care of us pregnant. I don't need to worry about that. All right. I get very, um, very excited about things. If you have any questions, if you're listening, uh, or watching right now live, let me know. All right. Next question. Uh, okay, I've answered this one. Okay, I keep, uh, Sarah, Sarah, I keep meeting men who want to have their cake and eat it too. They don't want commitment with one woman. They have women from their past and they're still very attached and partnered with. 
how do I weed out the men who are 40s plus and perhaps not commitment ready to one woman? Hmm. Good question, Sarah. So, or Sarah. So again, based on, uh, based on your question, I can assume that these men are emotionally unavailable. They, they don't want commitment with one woman. They have the past and they're still very attached and partnered with. Like that's all murky waters. That's all murky waters from the past. So that's what I'm saying. If you're attracting men, which seems to be a pattern, Sarah, or Sarah, if you're attracting these types of men who are attached to many different women, things are not clear, they can't commit to one, like mess. Again, M-E-S-S. -S. Are you available for mess? <laughs> is this what you want? Clearly not. So if this is a pattern for you and you're noticing that, how do you weed them out? I mean, we could talk about red flags and everything, but again, for me, the most important thing and why, why I know that the work that we do in our claim program produces lasting change is because it's not about me telling you, Sarah, well, if he says this next time, do this, and here are the rules again. Like, not, it's not black and white. It's again, if this is a pattern for you, then you need to look at how you're mirroring that. If, if there is mess in your relationship dynamics with men, you need to turn back around and say, what's the mess deep down the side of me? Why do I keep attracting these types of men, number one? Number two is why do I keep tolerating this? Why do I keep being attached to this? Like I was that woman, you know, I was involved with a man back and forth for about three years. It was a mess. It was, it was, it was a man who is emotionally unavailable. And I'm sitting there for three years and hoping and thinking that one day, one day he'll turn around and he'll understand, see. But I was a mess. I didn't know what love was. Love for me was silence. When I grew up with my emotionally unavailable father in the Soviet Union, you know how he showed love to us? We were punished by him not speaking to us for three days. Three days. I was coming up to him and I was asking him questions or daddy, let's go here. No words. And, and guess what? Today, sometimes, like Zoe's two and a half, I feel the tendency to actually punish her in the same way. Isn't that very strange how that happens when we as parents take on this BS reality. I sometimes feel myself wanting to, or I'm not going to say this because all of the parenthood, you like react. All of this is ingrained in us. But anyways, I realized what is love? I, I ask sometimes my clients when we drop deep into their body and we do coaching sessions, what is love? And then they give me some bullshit answer. Like, love is connection and trust. And, and I'm like, no, 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 slow down. Drop deep. What do you feel? How does love feel? A lot of women don't know how love feels. Do you? Right? Like, how does it feel when you're unconditionally accepted and loved just by being you? And not because of your achievements, not because of what you've done. Like you see it in, in like this kind of a conversation and epiphanies and transformation. This is what happens during our group coaching calls in our program, because this is deep stuff. This is not something like, I, like, how do I weed them out? I wish I could send you a manual, but it's not like that. Because even with a manual, which I feel like a lot of relationship programs out there will teach you, this will weed out some sort of things, but you'll, you'll keep attracting men who do not love you or do not know how to show love because they're also emotionally, I don't want to say broken, but unavailable. You always attract your equal in terms of your emotional availability, availability, your growth, your personal growth, where you are in your life. So always, it's a mirror principle. There's no, there's no scenario in the world where a woman, well, sometimes a woman tells me, tells me, Let's say even a woman like Sarah said, but I am emotionally available, but I want a relationship and I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready here. You're ready in your head. You keep telling yourself that. But what we see the reality of the men that you're attracting is not that. The same thing as, as people who have money problems or, you know, that they don't attract the jobs that they want. They're like, but I am the smartest person in the room. Are you? You know, like look at your reality around you and that will have the answers because if you were the smartest person in the room 
and the mess, like there's a lot of clarity in your body, you wouldn't be having all these problems. So that's what I would say to uh, Sarah. That that is really a pattern. If you see that pattern, the work needs to happen inside. You need to you need to look at all of this stuff, and you need to reframe that. A lot of this is belief system. A lot of this is has to be done through embodiment. A lot of this is polarity as well. Letting go, sitting with uncertainty, and that's what we do in the program, in the claim program. So, if you want to work with us, I encourage you to book your free discovery call and um, see if we can help. Claudia, how can I how can I dream with something I don't know how it feels? Yeah, so Claudia, that's um, so I'm, yeah, you said you don't. Yeah, so that's a really good question. How do you know what love is if you have never experienced it? That's a really good question, and my my opinion to that is that you you do you always know. I mean, love being loved unconditionally is an emotion a feeling that humans humans just just know intuitively love is so universal if your parents that's why you know for example children who had sexual abuse emotional abuse uh you know have been adopted or whatever they, they haven't felt that or you know abused in any way they haven't felt that initially humans have capacity for love and you can cultivate that within your own being. You can, you can explore that because unconditional love is in our genes. Unconditional love is always within us. It's in ourselves. It's how humans grow. Like if, if we didn't have that, I don't know if you're a mother or not, but the, the amount of love that I feel for my daughter and my husband is something that I did not feel. My mother passed away when I was really young. I was eight. And of course I felt a lot of love from her before that but this is something that you can cultivate love first of all Claudia this all starts with you it all starts with love but you know love yourself hashtag it's much more than hashtag you need to you need to know how it feels in your body and that's why as a feminine embodiment coach my work is to help women rediscover that again because so many women don't know they don't know and then they try to go after men or they, they wait for men to fill that gap. How can I love you unconditionally deep? How can he hold space for you? How can he make you feel safe if you cannot feel that within your own body? You'll always be chasing that dream and that man who loves you and who you feel safe with. Like, I want to feel safe. You first need to feel safety in your body. You first need to feel love in your body so that you can, from that place, attract what you want. And we do that in the program with women. I'm sure there's a lot of other tools and a lot of people who do that, but I figured out a way to do this in about 10 weeks or so through embodiment practices and things like that. All right. Yeah. Uh, hi, Emilia. Yeah, of course. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. It's, all, it's, it's, it's about you. It's not about the men. That's what I always say. All right, moving on. Uh, I have just a few questions left and then we'll see who's live here. If you have a question live, let me know. Anyways, okay. Any ways to recover once you let something slide into the 50-50 game or is it too late to flip it back once their interest has waned? Okay, good question. So um, I always talk about drop the 50-50 because there's no 50-50 here. Forget about the 50-50, what we talked about, right? Like we split the bills 50-50. We split our feminine and masculine energy 50-50. We split my breast full of milk 50-50. Okay, you grow half of the baby. I'll grow half of the baby. It doesn't work like that. So there is ways, of course. Um, this is from Jennifer. Um, yeah, and, and the ways are you, you need to step back. The more you lean back into your feminine energy, the more you surrender, let go of control, and let your man lead, the more he will be stepping up if that man has the capacity. So if you want to move away from 50-50, then you lean back massively. And that's what, what's happening in a lot of relationships um, that we work with women with, right? The more you, you create, you don't necessarily need to create space, but the more you lean back, the less you, you, you buy him underwear, the less you take care of his things. Like, I'll give you an example. My man, how I do this is actually, it's, it's so simple. So I have, and you know, we teach this to women as well. So many women make their, their men their life project. 
one of the biggest mistakes and one of the rules of being claimed. I think it's uh, rule seven or eight. You can find it on my podcast or you can find it on my IGTV. What women do, they get into a relationship or they get married, engaged, and like, that's it. Forget about me. Let's focus on everybody. <laughs> Let's focus on the man. Let's focus on the family. And so the man becomes their life project and their children become their life project. And everything is about them first. Give, 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 right? Nurture, nurture. And then hopefully they're going to return this. And this is what is going to fulfill me, which is a completely wrong premise. And the first rule of being claimed is you get the best piece. And you are the most important person in the family, not anyone else. Because as a woman, and especially as a mother and a wife, if you're happy, happy wife, happy life, right? So in my case, I always focus on me. I always tell the story where I, <laughs> I go and buy myself macaroons. Well, in the past, I'm over them. I had a period of weeks straight where I was buying macaroons. So I buy myself dessert and then, you know, he, I think my husband went away for a couple of days and I sent him a picture and he says, and there were like three little macaroons there. And he says, I hope you're going to share this with Zoe. Zoe's our two, two and a half year old. And I'm like, hmm, that didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe he's like, send me proof. So, you know, I, I do think of my daughter. Obviously, I love her and I, and I, and I tend to think I'm a good mother. But I think of myself first, because I know that, you know, if I'm happy, Zoe's going to be okay. My husband's going to be okay. And so I always have hobbies and things like last night, you know, he was, he, I, I knew that he wanted my attention because he was like, I don't know, flirting with me or something. I was in the bathroom. I always have, right now I'm into fashion and, and makeup, obviously. And I was watching this. I'm now in a course um, with, with this Russian lady. And she's like doing this IG lives every day and I'm totally, you know, I'm coming from home. I'm totally in it. I'm at night. I'm totally in it. And my man, like, you know, when you're busy with your life and you're doing something that you love and that's inspiring for you, your man will have to find, find shit to do without you. Yeah. And your children will, will have to entertain themselves. And I'm like, I'm not available for entertainment for everyone or like cooking in the kitchen for three hours for all of you guys. Like I'm good. I'm going to focus on me. Yeah. So I think that's what maintains my level of energy. I mean, look, I also am very tired and I burn out because I run a business. But when I do things that I love, when I surround myself with beauty, I just finished another episode from this Russian lady. I'm like, she's amazing. Uh, and she's like, surround yourself with beauty. How you don't burn out is where actually you have flowers on the table. And I'm just like, yeah, you know. And then my husband, my daughter... My future child, they all fit in into that because I'm not worried about how, oh my God, what did you eat? What, what, what do you, what do you want? And what do you want? And what do you, want? it's like, I care about what you want, but I care about, about me first. I wake up earlier than them. Well, earlier than my daughter, because I know that once she's up, that's it. My timer is off. Okay. So where was I with this? Yes. So flipping back is by focusing on yourself. Next one, what about dating apps that require women to make the first move? Okay, this is something that I, that I answered on my webinar, but um, I think this is going to be really funny for a lot of you. So, you know Bumble? I, I've listened to a, an interview with, with a Bumble founder a very long time ago before I was doing that. And she was saying how, you know, because we live in a world where men are predatory and blah, 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 you know, this whole narrative about patriarchy, they created an amazing app where actually women make the first move. Now, and I'm sure you've been on Bumble, <clears throat> those of you who are listening. I haven't because Bumble came after I got married. So I actually just used Tinder and that's it. That's it. Like what, five years ago, six years ago? Anyways, uh, so yeah, I, look, I understand the intention there in terms of creating an, a dating app where women make the first move. Totally get it. But it doesn't work like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Polarity is com completely depolarized. Like women are expected on the app to initiate. So there's way to, ways to work around that. One of my clients said Bumble is a breeding ground for beta men because it takes away the, the hunt. It, it takes away the game, the initiation. And of course, there's a bunch of assholes and douchebags there. And, you know, my clients also get these messages. Hey, beautiful. Want to have sex? Like delete. 
Why are you even taking a screenshot and posting in our client group? Delete, block. Like when I get a comment like that, I don't reply. Like I got a, I got a comment on Instagram, I don't know how many weeks ago. Hey, beautiful, wanna be my sugar daddy? Wanna be my sugar mama? I actually didn't block that. I said, sure, send me the details just to entertain. And then it was some bullshit, whatever, that I deleted. That was hilarious. But so with Bumble, for example, uh, what, what I know my clients do, I know you have to kind of accept and initiate, but send a smiley face or send a hello. That's it. Because it's on them. You always need to leave the ball in their court because they need to initiate. They need to pursue. Well, they don't need to, but, but they, they actually really want to. And you're playing on on very natural dynamics of polarity, the masculine and the feminine. The masculine will always want to hunt. Don't rip them off of the hunting opportunities to, to pursue and to claim because it's in their genes. Men love to pursue women, love to claim them, love to, say, love to hear a yes, love to put a smile on your face. It's beautiful, love to claim you, right? The ultimate claim is the marriage proposal. I was having an interview with Elephant Journal uh, founder, Waylon, and he's like, and you know, he's kind of in between this whole polarity. He's exploring this and I get it. You know, it's a controversial subject. He's like, yeah, well, you know, we're both doing this and we're both doing this. And I, and I, uh, you know, organize the proposal. And I'm like, why did you organize the proposal then? Would it be the same if you organize the proposal or, if, and if she, do you think she would feel, do you think you'd feel the same as she would have if, if you proposed and if like, you know, the masculine is all about the conquering. It's all about that hunting and, 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 and protecting and providing. It gives them a sense of fulfillment. And when a man proposes you to be his wife, he's taking a whole lot of responsibility on his shoulders. And you've got to let him do that. Do not push a man to propose. Anyways, I'll be talking here forever. So what about dating apps who require women to make the first move? Use them because obviously the men are there. <laughs> but make sure the ball is always in his court. Next one, Lexi, should I push to date way outside of my physical, of my typical type as far as looks go? Mm. Uh, good question. I don't know, should you, Lexi? Are we always, look, the philosophy here is your physical type, look, my husband is definitely not my physical type. I imagine this masculine man with a beard, with a lot of muscles and like tattoos around, who was into yoga. And here he shows up with flip-flops, bald, almost no beers, huge nose, had head muscles, which was attractive. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> had no game, you know? Like, so I would say don't push way outside your typical, uh, as far as looks go. Like, you know, if, I don't know. Well, actually, I don't even know. Like, you know, looks are not as important for a woman as they are for a man, actually. And I know this might sound politically incorrect, but it's true. You know, when I was talking to Waylon again, he was telling me about this story, how he was at the market. And there's this gorgeous, the most beautiful woman I've seen in my life walking past. Do women describe men this way when they meet them? No. We don't go to a, a market or see, say, Jenny, guess what? I saw the most beautiful man that I've ever seen in my life. Like, no, we don't care about how they look like. And that's actually, again, we go to the roots of evolutionary psychology. Men do not compete for looks. Men compete for resources. Women, on the other hand, compete a lot for looks. That's why we, we actually can explain the whole phenomenon of magazines and, and, and body, um, body image issues and things like that. Because women do compete for looks. Because looks and sexuality is actually are actually some of our biggest weapons. I'm not saying that they are the biggest weapons, but some of our biggest weapons, 100%, right? I put makeup every day and hair and everything. This is what we love to do. And women will compete. Men compete with resources for the most fertile woman and women compete on looks, right? And, and it's been always like that. Like you, you can't deny biology or evolution. We need to understand that. We need to work with that. And if we go against that, then I mean, men are very visual. That's why, you know, for me, I don't care how my man looks like. What I care is that he has this masculine protector and provider that we, you know, we're, we have the same goals. We have the same values. I feel safe with him. I feel amazing with him. And he created that polarity. The looks don't actually matter. So in terms of experimenting, Lexi, I think you should totally try, you know, 
but don't go, I don't know, I, I, you know, for me, I don't know, for me, I want my men, for example, to be fit and, and to be in shape. And so, uh, you know, outside, like I wouldn't go with a man who's totally overweight. I wouldn't go on a date with him, for example, just because it's not me, uh, right? So experiment with that, but also know that looks, you know, don't matter as much for women as, as they do for men. Um, and, and, you know, they shouldn't matter that much for, for, for men as well in terms of, you know, body image. I'm not saying like, just be skinny, be this bimbo girl. But it matters to us first. Like, you need to feel good in your body. And you need to feel good in how you look like. Because if you don't, you know how it feels. If you're a woman who goes on a day, you don't look good. You don't look good to yourself. That's the most important. You don't dress up for men. You dress up for yourself. Right? So go and give men chances and say yes and experiment because you might be very, very rigid in terms of I want him to be this height and I want him to earn this much money and have this job. Forget your checklist. Focus on how does it feel to be with a man. All right, we're going to finish up. This was more than an hour. Okay, let me see if there's any questions here. Um, Kayla, how can I support my man if he struggles with anxiety and security? Great question, Kayla. Um, I need a moment here to think. Kayla, I would answer this question in terms of remember that you're not his therapist and remember that you're not his coach and your job is not to fix his anxiety, his insecurity. How can you support him? You can be there for him, but, but do not put yourself into the center position where you, where it is your responsibility. Trust that your man will figure it out. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard to say that because it's like, but how do I trust? But his anxiety and his insecurity is not your anxiety and your insecurity. This, this is a very complicated issue that sometimes I get questions like this and I'm very careful how to answer them. Because, you know, you might suggest certain things. And if my man was struggling with anxiety and insecurity, of course, as a woman, you want to support him. You want to hold space for him. You want to be that, you want to play that role. And look, sometimes it happens that you will have to play the masculine if your man is totally broken down doesn't know what's happening, you know. I mean, we all go through through different scenarios in our lives. Um, you know, usually the principle is like 80-20 kind of, you know, like in, in, the, in big situations in life, in life circumstances, he might, you know, lose a parent or whatever, lose a big job. Like, you know, men go through crisis, obviously, and they can't always be in that masculine um, state, state and hold the space for you. Um, and so sometimes you'll have to step up and sometimes you'll have to, Hold the ship together, right? The only thing is that make sure that it, it, it doesn't become a habit or it doesn't become a, a permanent state of being so that you, you'll end up in a polarity that's totally reversed. So if that's the case, then he'll probably need some time to, to figure this out. And you might need to have a conversation to set up some boundaries, right? The only other thing that I'm going to say is don't let that consume your life and drive your life forward because again this is not your responsibility we have to trust that our men will ha will find the tools and will find support systems right and the more you step back i'm not saying step back completely know that like let him know that you're there you're there if he needs anything you can you can provide some things you can leave a note on the table and said and say um john recommended a few good therapists here are their numbers right or you could say, you know, to a few of his friends, um, John's not having a great time. That's it. And then you let you let it go. And you trust your man to figure it out. And if he, if he needs help, he will reach out. And you can let him that know. You can initiate and um, he can just go to respond to men who chose you. I didn't ever swipe. Cool. All right, last question, ladies. Oh my God, I've been talking for, for an hour. Okay, so, um, okay, this is from Abigail, I think. Just came across your work. Been binge watching your videos. Thank you. Um, so good, thank you. Okay, I can already sense the shift. Da, 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 da. Okay, my question is, as a single woman, how do I stay in our feminine flow while a place 
while in a place of just trying to make ends meet. I feel I've been in a place of masculine ambition and striving, trying to find my own sovereignty and stability and struggle to remain in my feminine and find myself wanting a masculine man so that I have more resource to be in my feminine, but fear I'm creating codependency or give my power away or compromise my worth in the process. Thank you. All right, let's read this again because I feel like this is a, a good complicated question. As a single woman, how do I stay in my feminine flow? Well, while in a place of just trying to make ends meet, I've been in a place of masculine ambition to find sovereign stability and struggle to remain in my feminine, find myself wanting a masculine man so I have more resource to be in my feminine, but fear I'm creating codependency. I'm giving my... Yeah, okay, got it. So, Abigail... Um, The thoughts that are coming to me when I when I read your, I, first of all, your question is is very very coherent and true, because if you want a man, if you are wanting a masculine man so you can have more resource to be in your feminine, that's a wrong premise to go by, in my opinion. It's the same thing, as a man would say, I'm wanting a feminine woman so I have more resource to be in my masculine. Right, because that resource does not come from the masculine man, that resource comes from you first and foremost. So, you need to cultivate that within your own body and within your own system. Because you're right, if you're waiting and wanting for a man to hold up space for you and come into your life so you're more resourced in your feminine, so you can lean back, then that will create core dependency. Because it's going to be like, okay, if there's no masculine man in my life, that I can't be resourced or I can't be in my feminine. It doesn't work like that. You need to lean back first. You need to be surrendering first in your own body. Softness, surrendering, letting go, uh, letting men lead. And the, from that place, you will attract the masculine man, right? It doesn't go the other way around. So... Look, first and foremost, I mean, obviously we talked about, right, the, the, about the fact that both men and, and women have the masculine. And as a single woman, you know, when I think about being single and being in a relationship and how does that play out? Of course, I can tell you that when, when, when you are in a relationship, it's a lot, I don't want to say easier, but you can play on those dynamics, right? You, you can relax and let go. Like, I, I can relax. I, I know that my man will take care of things, right? And I don't need to push that hard. And I don't, you know. So, in that, and that's why we want to be in relationships with polarity, with a masculine man. Because I can surrender, right? And I can surrender into that space and, and let him take care of me and of the world, right? After I took care of everybody else during the day. So... As a single woman, you're going to have to, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a total shift. You're going to have to, you know, wake up and uh, go to work and activate a lot of your masculine energy there and make decisions all day and, and do what you need to do. But when it comes to men, and also you can bring that into your work, you will have to know how to surrender and let go. To trust. If you want to be in a relationship with this type of man, you need to first attract him, right? Uh, <clears throat> so you struggle to remain in your feminine. Yeah, this requires practice. And again, if you need, if you want our help in the program, in the claim program, that's what we do. We teach a woman a daily feminine flow practice, which is an embodiment practice. That you know, for ten weeks, you're. Um, practicing that and you continue to practice that I still do my practice every day because it's very easy for me to get rigid again in my system if I don't have the tools to release and let go so you know and I also want to say that a lot of women you know we need to come to our own so sovereignty and stability within our own being like you know that healthy masculine or whatever divine masculine whatever you want to call it um, before we also attract a man who's healthy in our being. So in a way, like a lot of women have gone overboard in their masculine, right? The super healthy masculine there in terms of stability, security, independence, success, 
but their feminine is underdeveloped because it's very dormant. They don't know how to let her out. And so that's why we work on these things. So in your case, Abigail, I would say practice, practice, practice but mostly practice on that not wanting a masculine so that you can be more resourced into your feminine in your feminine because that's your job right first we focus on the internal we do this through a lot of embodiment practices a lot of reframing beliefs that i have to do it all and blah blah i don't trust men we reframe all of those beliefs it's an internal work and then we also work on the surface level stuff which is external how can you go through your day with how can you surround yourself with people, objects, information that is, is, is uplifting and inspiring for you rather than being uh, draining and not supporting the belief system and what you want as a woman. Uh, take more, after all of the internal work again, <clears throat> take more baths, focus on beauty, focus on fashion, focus on crafts and skills and how can you relax, right? Relax, relax, relax in your nervous system. Be with other women. I've written a lot of articles about how to step into your feminine through many, many different ways. I would suggest you go there or watch, you know, other IGTVs or podcast episodes. Um, all right, ladies, um, I think this was it for today. Um, well, for this episode, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Today is my podcasting day, so I'll be recording more um, stuff. <clears throat> I'll record an episode next on my pregnancy. And then I have a bunch of other stuff to record today. So, um, and I'll probably be coming up live all day today, maybe half a day. So I can record these and then we'll post them later and release them on the podcast. But thanks so much for joining us. Um, again, if you're curious and, and things resonate with you and you, you find yourself in the patterns, I really encourage you to um, apply for your discovery call. If you really want to work on this, work with us. Um, uh, go to girlskill.com slash apply. Uh, our calendars are pretty full this week, which is uh, su super amazing. But uh, you can fill up a quick application and then jump with us on a free discovery call so you can see how we can help you and whether this is going to be a great fit for you so we can work on this together. All right. If you are hanging out on Instagram, I'm probably going to be coming up in about five minutes or so again to talk about my pregnancy and, uh, I don't know, questions or... I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, but I know I want to do an episode on that because <laughs> my second pregnancy has been very uh, different. Anyways, thanks so much, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye. I actually had some question here. Oh, okay. Hang on. Uh, okay, I have actually three more questions here. I've stopped my episode recording. But let me answer them real quick here. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I saw them in the little question box. Um, from Drayana. How do I maintain my feminine polarity when I have to take care of myself, my finances and everything self? And then she says, I have been in an emotionally abusive marriage. I want to surrender, but I have to go to work. Make it work for me after abandonment. How do I protect my feminine energy at the same time? Make my life. Yeah, Joanna, I think I've answered this um, already on the question. Really, really hard. Sounds like your, your marriage dynamic is, is reversed. You're taking care of everything. So it's all about reversing that. It's all about, and when we work with women in relationships, uh, we always talk about, you know, we will work together Two things are going to happen. Number one, it's either the that polarity is going to shift and then you'll see your man stepping up where you don't have to take care of everything, be the husband and the wife, or you will have the clarity to actually move forward in a powerful way. We have a lot of women who are going through divorce, separation, or they've joined our program. In a lot of the cases, that they see that the dynamic shifts in their relationship or marriage, but in some cases, they actually decide to move forward. Because if this is too hard and your man is not stepping up and you're giving them the, ch him the chances, I would recommend moving forward. But through this process of working with us, if you are curious about how to do that, then um, I invite you to apply for a discovery call to see if we can help you. And then the other question was, is it too late for women in their 40s to find true love? And do you recommend that women always date older men? No and no. Of course, it's not too late for women in their 40s to find true love. It's not too late when you're 80 to find true love. And I I never, well, always date older men. Look, <clears throat> no, I don't always recommend dating older men. There's plenty of happy, successful relationships with men who are, um, who are younger. 
age doesn't matter. <clears throat> of course, there's some considerations where, you know, the, 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 the older the man is, we can assume that the more resourced he is, the more, <clears throat> the more maturity he, he has and the more wisdom he has, right? And, and the more he's worked on himself, the same thing we can say for women, right? The older the woman is, the wiser she is, um, you know, the, well, the thing is that here's where we go into this, into this thing of biology again and evolutionary psychology because it's not the same. I wish I could say, you know, for men, it's like they have this trajectory. The older they get, the more successful they get, hopefully, right? The more resource they have, the more, the more um, fertile ground, the more legacy, the more mission, the more his reach expands and he can take care of you and your many children, blah, blah. And I wish I could say the same for women. The more, the older she gets, the more beautiful she gets, right? The more, um, the more children she can have. Like, that's not true, right? And that's where the difference is. Men have, can have children until they're 80, but women can't. And so the, the understanding the difference really plays into that polarity perspective. So, you know, we, we, ha we have to know that and we have to be careful with how, how we play this game. So, no, there are men. I'm not to say that older men are a lot more masculine than the younger men. I've met men in their 20s or their 30s who are very mature and, and, and very secure within themselves. Everybody's so different. So probably in a lot of the cases, all, like men are... If you look around at relationships, you know, men are older than, than women. Not, I mean, maybe by two years. My man is older than me by 14 years. That's a big difference and a big uh, gap. But um, I don't think that plays a crucial role. There are some considerations, but it's not that crucial. All right. Sorry I missed your questions. I hope that answers that. And I'll see you next time. Bye.